Hi, this is Jeff from the Icebox Radio Theater cutting in here real briefly to ask for your help. We need your assistance to make this station and this radio theater better. And to that end, we have established a permanent a survey at our website. That's at iceboxradio.org. Just go to that website, and you can find the survey link across the top of the page there. And uh, go to that link and fill out the survey. It should only take a couple of minutes, and it just gives us a little bit of information about you and also about your preferences concerning audio drama and podcasting. Again, that website, iceboxradio.org, and just click on the survey link to participate today. Thank you so much, and now let's return to the stories. You're listening to the Icebox Radio Theater, coming to you from the Salty Jester, International Falls, Minnesota. The Maltese Falcon, based on the novel by Dashiell Hammett. It's the early hours of the morning in a year quite distant from our own. The city of San Francisco lies sleeping under a blanket of fog. Along a lonely street, a man walks slowly, his footsteps ringing against the wet pavement. He passes a deserted alley and stops. The man turns and peers into the darkness. Suddenly, one of the shadows moves. The man stumbles backwards, his hands reach out to shield his body. a.m. that same morning, two men stand in the hallway of a simple but not unstylish apartment building. They're at the door of one Samuel Spade, private detective. And these men carry badges. All right, Spade, open up. We know you're in there. Come on. Who is it? Dundee and Pole House. Want to speak to you. Well, come in, Lieutenant. Nice time to make a call. Yeah. Four in the morning. Or did your watch stop? We don't have any hours on the force, Spade. Got a couple of questions to ask you. Sure. Hiya, Tom. Hello, Sam. What do you know about this killing, Spade? Very little. The uh, victim was your partner, wasn't he? That's right. You don't seem very broken up over it. Miles Archer gets shot dead two hours ago, and you toss it off like a scotch and soda. Speaking of... Oh, excuse me. Uh, will you have one, Lieutenant? No, I won't. Okay. Do you mind if I do? <sighs> you don't like me, do you, Dundee? I don't like cops that aren't on the force. And I asked you what you knew about Miles Archer getting killed. I told you, very little. Your boys called me about ten after two. By the time I got down there, Tom here had already seen everything I could. He was shot in the alley, broke through the fence and tumbled down the hill. Gun was on his hip and his coat was buttoned. They found a Webley automatic in the alley with one bullet out of it. We all know that. Was Archer on a job last night? Yeah. He was supposed to be tailing a fellow named Floyd Thursby. Thursby? What for? Come on, Spade. What for? Trying to find out where he lived. Suppose you answer once without thinking so hard. I don't like this, Dundee. What are you sucking around here for? Tell me or get out. I asked you why you were tailing Thursby. I wasn't. Miles was. And for the swell reason that we had a client who was paying good United States currency to have him tailed. Who's the client? Sorry, I can't tell you that. Ah, be reasonable, Sam. Give us a chance. How can we turn up anything on Miles' killing if you don't tell us what you've got? I see your side, I guess. Okay. It was a girl who wanted us to tail Thursby. What girl? She came into the office yesterday afternoon, didn't know who she was. Effie announced her about three o'clock. She said her name was Wonderly. Someone to see you, Sam. Who is it, Effie, my, my treasure? Is it a customer? I guess so. You'll want to see her anyways. She's a knockout. <laughs> you know, you'll never ensnare me in a loveless marriage if you keep throwing women at me this way. Promise? Sure in, Effie, darling. Will you come in, Miss Wonderly? Oh, thank you. Uh, Mr. Spade? That's right. Now, what can I do for you, Miss Wonderly? Well, I, I don't know where to start. I asked at the hotel for the name of a reliable private detective, and they mentioned yours. Suppose you tell me about it from the very beginning. I'm from New York. I've come here to find my sister. Are you sure she's in San Francisco? Well, she was two weeks ago. I have a letter from her. She... She came here with a man named Thursby, Floyd Thursby. You mean she ran away with him? Oh, Mr. Spade, I've got to find her. 
Mother and father are in Honolulu, and it would, it would kill them if... Oh, I've, I've got to get her back before they come home. What exactly did she say in the letter? Nothing, except that she was all right. I sent her a note begging her not to do anything foolish. I sent it to general delivery and told her I was coming out to get her. I shouldn't have done that, should I? Well, it's not always easy to know what to do. You haven't found her, I take it. No. I told her I'd be at the St. Mark for her to meet me there. But I've waited three whole days. She didn't come. She didn't even send a message. Go on. Oh, the waiting was horrible. Yesterday afternoon, I went to the post office. Corinne didn't come for her mail, but Floyd Thursby did. Did you speak to him? Yes. He wouldn't tell me where Corinne was. But he promised to bring her to the hotel this evening. Hiya, Sam. Say, I... Oh, excuse me. Oh, that's all right, Miles. Miss Wonderly, this is Mr. Archer, my partner. How do you do? Uh, Mr. Archer? Miss Wonderly's sister ran away from New York with a fellow named Thursby. Miss Wonderly has seen Thursby and has a date with him tonight at the St. Mark. Maybe he'll bring the sister with him, but chances are he won't. Miss Wonderly wants us to find the sister and get her away from him and back home. Right? Yes. Oh, any chance this Thursby would try to cover up by marrying your sister? Well, he has a wife and children in England. Yes, they usually do, though not always in England. Oh, please take this seriously, Mr. Spade. You have to understand he's a dangerous man. I don't think he'd stop at anything. I don't believe he'd hesitate to... to kill Corinne if he thought it would save him. What time is he meeting you? Between 8 and 10. All right. We'll have a man there. I'll look after it myself. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Not at all. Oh, yes, I I suppose there should be some money. A a retainer is customary, yes. Will $200 be enough? That's fine. It would help some if you'd meet Thursby in the lobby. All right. Oh, you don't have to look for me, Miss Wonderly. I'll see you all right. Thank you. Uh, Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, Miss Wonderly. See you tonight. Yes, goodbye. Well, Miles, what do you think of her? You saw her first, Sam, but I spoke first. I wasn't talking about that. I was talking about her story. Huh? What of it? (laughs) Nothing. You've got brains, Miles. Yes, you have. So Miles went out to tail Thursby last night? Yeah. And Thursby shot him. Is that what you think? No, that's what you think, Dundee. I don't know. Tom, get on the phone. Call the St. Mark and ask for a girl named Wonderly. I thought of that myself, Lieutenant. She was never registered. The whole story's probably a fake. A fake, huh? A fake story? Same as yours? What's your boyfriend getting at, Tom? I'll tell you what I'm getting at. Floyd Thursby, the man your partner was tailing, was shot down in front of his hotel an hour ago. Take your paws off me. Easy, boss. Easy. Where were you tonight, Spade? Other than down at the crime scene, I was right here. Got any proof? No, no witnesses. So you think I shot Thursby to revenge my partner, huh? Well, I know where I stand now. Thursby die? Yes. How'd I kill him? I forget. He was shot three times in the back with a 44 or 45. Nobody saw it, but that's how it figures. Hotel people know anything? Know about anything about him? Nothing, except he'd been there a week. Alone? Yeah, alone. Well, did you find out who he was? What his game was? We thought you could tell us that. I've never seen Thursby, dead or alive. Now look, Spade, if you did it, you'll get a square deal from me and most of the breaks. Don't know that I blame you much, the man that killed your partner, but that won't keep me from nailing you if you're guilty. Fair enough. But I'd feel better about it if you have a drink with me. No? No. In that case, good night, gentlemen. I'm tired. A gray dawn rises over San Francisco, and as it does, we find Spade leaning back in his office chair, sullenly gazing at the window and door signs that still read Spade and Archer when... Hello? Yes. Oh, hello, Miss Wonderly. Where are you? What? Coronet Apartments? Room 101. Got it. I'll be there in a few minutes. Oh, and uh, by the way, what's your name this morning? Miss LeBlanc? Ah, okay, Miss LeBlanc, I'll see you there. Mr. Spade, I I have a terrible confession to make. Yeah, well, go ahead, Miss LeBlanc. Well, that story I told you yesterday was was all a story. Well, that's all right. I didn't believe it anyhow. I believed your $200. 
I don't understand. You paid too much for someone who was telling the truth, and enough more to make it all right. I see. Now, uh, let's clear up one thing first. Should I call you Miss LeBlanc or Wonderly? My name is really O'Shaughnessy. Bridget O'Shaughnessy. Well, that one I can believe. Mr. Spade, tell me, am I to blame for last night? Well, you warned us that Thursby was dangerous. No, I, I wouldn't say it was entirely your fault. Oh, thank you. Mr. Archer was so... So alive yesterday, so solid and hearty. Stop it. He knew what he was doing. Those are the chances we take. Was he married? Yeah, with 10,000 life insurance and a wife that didn't like him. Anyway, there's no time for worrying about that right now. Right now there's a flock of cops running around out there with their noses to the ground. Do they know about me? Well, they know about a girl named Wonderly, so no. At least for now. But must they know about me at all? Couldn't you manage to shield me from them? Maybe, but uh, I need to know what it's all about. Well, I can't tell you now. Later I will. You'll have to trust me. Oh, I'm, I'm so alone and afraid. I, I've got nobody to help me if you won't. Please trust me. Help me. Be generous, Mr. Spade. You won't need much of anybody's help. You're good. It's chiefly your eyes, I think, and that throb you get in your voice when you say things like, Be generous, Mr. Spade. <laughs> All right. I deserve that. But the lie was in the way I said it, not in what I said. You can leave if you like. Not just yet. I've got nothing against trusting you blindly, but I can't do either of us any good if I don't know what it's all about. For instance, I've got to have some sort of a line on your friend Thursby. I met him in Hong Kong. We came together last week. Go on. Well, I, I needed him. I was completely dependent on him. He knew it. He took advantage to double-cross me. How? Well, I, I can't tell you that. <laughs> All right. Why'd you want him shadowed? I wanted to learn how far he'd gone, whom he was meeting. Did he kill Archer? Oh, yes, certainly. Thursby had a Luger in his holster. Archer wasn't killed with a Luger. Oh, Floyd always carried an extra revolver in his overcoat pocket. Why all the guns? Oh, he lived by them. The rumor was Floyd first came to Asia as a bodyguard for a gambler. The gambler disappeared, and Floyd knew something about the disappearance. I don't know. I know that he never went to sleep without crumpling up old newspapers on the floor of his bedroom so that no one would sneak up silently. You picked a nice sort of a playmate. Mm, that's the only sort that would have helped me. How bad a spot are you in? As bad as bad could be. Physical danger? I'm not heroic. I don't think there's anything worse than death. Oh, you've got to help. Do you hear? You've got to. All right. All right. I'll do what I can. But we're going to talk, Miss O'Shaughnessy, sooner or later. I've got to know what it's all about. That evening, Spade returned to his office just as the painter finished converting all the glass doors from Spade and Archer to Samuel Spade Investigations. Spade was not at his desk five minutes before his secretary entered. He's back, Sam. Who's that, Effie? The character I told you about this morning. Here's his card. Joel Cairo. <laughs> hmm. Gardenia. Shoo him in, Effie, darling. Shoo him in. Right. Well, come in, Mr. Cairo. Oh, thank you. You're very kind. Sit down, Mr. Cairo. Thank you, sir. Now, what can I do for you? First, may a stranger offer condolences for your partner's unfortunate death. Thanks. May I ask, Mr. Spade, if there is a certain relationship between that and the death of the man Thursby? Hmm. I beg your pardon, but it's not idle curiosity that prompts my question. I am trying to recover an ornament that has been, shall we say, mislaid. I hope you could assist me in this matter. I'm listening. The ornament is a statuette, a black figure of a bird. I am prepared to pay on behalf of the figure's rightful owner the sum of $5,000 for its recovery and uh, what is the phrase? No questions will be asked. Hmm. $5,000 is a lot of money. Come in. Is there anything else, Sam? No. Good night, Effie. Good night. Oh, lock the door when you go, will you? Good night. Well, Mr. Cairo, $5,000 is a very... What do you think you're doing? I am pointing a gun directly at your heart. You will please clasp your hands together at the back of your neck and do not move. I intend to search your offices, and if you attempt to prevent me, I shall most certainly shoot you. 
All right. Go ahead and search. You will please come to center of the room. I shall make sure you are not armed. Certainly. All right, drop the gun. Drop it. Unhand me. Drop it or I'll twist your arm off. There. Now sit down and behave yourself or I'll sock you one. Look what you've done to my shirt. I'm sorry. I guess I get a little annoyed when guys like you come in with phony offers of $5,000. You are mistaken, Mr. Spade. That was and is a genuine offer. Then why the stick-up? I think it is very understandable that I should attempt to retrieve the figurine without incurring any undue expense. So you think I have the statue? Do you? No. Then why do you risk serious injury to prevent me from searching for it? Why should I sit around here letting people stick me up? So your offer still goes, huh? Most certainly. Well, all right. Now let's put our cards on the table. Your first guess was that I had the bird. There's nothing to that. What's your second guess? That you know where it is, or at least that you know where it is you can get it. You're not hiring me to do any murders or burglaries for you, but to simply get it back in, a, in an honest, lawful way. If possible, but in any event with discretion, I am at the Hotel Belvedere when you wish to communicate with me. Good evening, Mr. Spade. So long, and oh, uh, wait, one thing. You know a girl named Wonderly? Wonderly? I don't believe so. No. Le- LeBlanc? No. How about Bridget O'Shaughnessy? The Hotel Belvedere, Mr. Spade, room 635. Okay. Oh, pardon me, but may I have my gum back, please? Oh, yeah, sure. Forgotten I had it. Here you are. Thank you. Now you please clasp your hands at the back of your neck. I intend to search your offices. (laughs) Well, I'll be... (laughs) All right, go ahead. I won't stop you. (laughs) Two murders, a femme fatale spinning webs of lies, and now a mysterious black bird hunted by a tiny man with a gun. The next day on the hunt for answers, Spade returns to the fashionable apartment on Coronet Street. Bridget O'Shaughnessy waits pensively just inside her apartment door. Oh, come in, Mr. Spade. Do you have any news for me? Yeah, a little. Did you manage it so that the police won't have to know about me? Well, they won't for a while, anyway. Oh, you won't get into any trouble, I hope. Oh, I don't mind a reasonable amount of trouble. Oh, I worry so much. I worry about what might happen to you after what happened to your partner. Please, please sit down. You, uh, you aren't exactly the sort of person you pretend to be, are you? Oh, what do you mean? The schoolgirl manner, stammering, blushing, and all that. Because if you were as innocent as you pretended to be, we'd never get any place. <laughs> all right, I'm sorry. I won't be innocent. Good. You said you had news? I saw Joel Cairo last night. <laughs> you... Do you know him? Only slightly. Well, what did he say? About what? Well, about me. Nothing. What did he talk about? He offered me $5,000 for the black bird. Oh, did he? Then what did you say? I said $5,000 is a lot of money. Well, it is. It's a lot more than I could ever offer you if I must bid for your loyalty. (laughs) That's good coming from you. What have you given me besides $200? Have you given me any of your confidence, any of the truth? If my loyalty is for sale, why shouldn't I sell it to the highest bidder? Oh, can't you trust me a little longer? How much is a little? What are we waiting for? I just need a little more time. And I need to know what it's all about, or I can't do either of us any good. I... I must talk to Joel Cairo. Could you arrange a meeting and be there for my protection? I suppose so. You can see him tonight. Well, he can't come here. I can't let him know where I am. All right, then my place. What about it? Well, that would be all right, I suppose, but... You'll have to let me go about this in my own way. You mustn't interfere. All right. I'll just sit and listen while you talk over old times, making sure that little Joel Cairo doesn't attack or murder you, of course. (laughs) You're a strange person. I like you. Yeah, well, don't overdo it. You can have a talk with Cairo, then after that, you'll talk to me. Sometime later, at Spade's apartment. Come in, Mr. Cairo. Mr. Spade, there appears to be a boy outside watching the house. Yeah, I know. I spotted him. A boy? What boy? I don't know. Some pipsqueak with two or three guns bulging in his pockets. He's been tailing me around town all evening. D- 
Did he follow you to my apartment? Nah, I shook him off long before then. Have a seat. Thank you. I'm delighted to see you again, madame. I was sure you would be, Joel. Mr. Spade told me about your offer for the Falcon. How soon can you have the money ready? It is ready. In cash? I can have it at any time with only a few moments notice during banking hours. Well, that's good. But I haven't got the Falcon. What? Oh, don't worry. I'll have it in another week at the most. Why must I wait a week? Perhaps not a whole week. And why, if I may ask, are you willing to send it to me after everything? Well, I'm afraid. After what happened to Floyd, I'm deathly afraid. I don't want to touch it except to turn it over to somebody else. Tell me, what exactly did happen to Thursby? He was murdered by the fat man. The fat man? Is he here? I don't know. I suppose so. What difference does it make? It might make a world of difference, madame, considering the boy who was outside the house. Yes, but you might be able to get around him, Joel, as you did that one in Istanbul. What was his name? You mean the one you attempted to sed- seduce and... Uh, oh! Get away from her. Get away, you hear. Take your hands off me. Just calm down. She slapped me. Did you see that? She can't get away with that. When you're slapped, you'll take it and like it. Oh! Now cool down. This is the second time you've laid hands on me, and it will be the last. I make no promises. You better get out, Cairo. I'll call you tomorrow. You're working for her now. Is that it? I'm working for myself. You want to withdraw your offer, just say so. The offer still stands. All right. Tomorrow, then. Very well. Good night, Mr. Spade. And, uh, to the soir, madame. Well, you've got some fine friends. Do they always carry on so? I suppose I ought to thank you. You're welcome. Well, now that you've had your talk with Cairo, you can talk to me. Well, it didn't work out the way I'd hoped. I'll have to go now. Oh, no. Not until you've told me all about it. Oh, am I your prisoner? Hmm. Maybe. Maybe the kid outside hasn't gone home yet. Oh, do you think he's still there? Likely. Well, I'll stay. For a while, anyway. Okay. Now, what's this bird, this falcon that everyone's all steamed up about? It's a black figure of a bird, a hawk or a falcon about a foot high. What makes it so important? I don't know. They wouldn't tell me. But they promised me $5,000 if I helped them to get it from the man who had it. That was in Istanbul? Yes. All right. Go on. Well, that's all. They promised me the money to help them, and I did. And then we found out that Joel Cairo meant to desert us, taking the falcon with him and leaving Floyd and I with nothing. So we did that exactly to him. Hmm. But then I wasn't any better off than before, because Floyd hadn't any intention of keeping his promise to me about sharing equally. I learned that by the time we got here. What's this uh, this bird made of? Porcelain or black stone? I don't know. You're a liar. What? A liar. A very good one, but a liar. Yes, I am. I've always been a liar. (laughs) Well, don't brag about it. Is there any truth at all in that yarn? Some. Not very much. All right. Well, we've got the whole night before us. I'll put some coffee on and we'll try again. Oh, I'm so tired. I'm so tired of lying and thinking up lies and not knowing what is a lie and what's the truth. Don't ask me, please. Don't. If there's any kindness in you at all. That's right. Turn on the beauty. Let your eyes get nice and starry. Put your arms around my neck and look pleadingly at me. Now you are dangerous. You think it's going to get you any place? I suppose it couldn't. Not with you. Don't be so sure. Night turns into morning. And Spade sees Bridget O'Shaughnessy off in a cab. By and by, he returns to his office. What's a good word, Effie, my darling? You're in a good mood. Had a pleasant evening? A gentleman never tells. I'll bet. Well, while you were getting your beauty sleep, we've had two visits from about the biggest character I think I've ever seen. Speak English, darling. A man, 300 pounds of him encased in a Seville rose suit with a bowler hat that probably costs my monthly salary. The fat man. What'd he say? Not much, though he used a lot of words saying it. But if you want to find out what he wants, the boy with him mentioned that they were staying at a Hotel Berkeley. 
Gray coat and hat, just a kid, maybe 19. With a solid manner to match, yeah. Know him? No, but it's be, he's been shadowing me for two days. Is that to do with the business with that girl? I think so. Speaking of, did the DA's office call? Twice. You won't be able to put them off much longer, Sam. I won't need to for very much longer. Just enough for a conversation with that fat man. Wish me luck, darling. I'm off to the Hotel Berkeley. Be careful, Sam. All right, Sonny. Where is he? What? Come on, where is he? You work for him, don't you? Or have you been tailing me for fun? What are you talking about? The fat man. I want to speak to him. What do you think you're doing, Jack? You kidding me? I'll tell you when I am. You've been tailing me around for days, and I'm getting a little sick of it. You can tell the fat man I said so. Shove off. You'll have to talk to me before you're through, Sonny. So will he. You keep asking for it, and you're going to get it. Plenty. People lose teeth talking like that. If you want to hang around, you'll be polite. Now tell the fat man to call me and leave his name this time. Hello, Sam. A Mr. Gutman called. He says that the boy gave him your message and that he looks forward to meeting you. Room 407, the Berkeley, this afternoon at 3. Ah, Mr. Spade. Delighted to see you. Delighted. How do you do, Mr. Gutman? Sit down, my friend. We'll have a little drink. I can't stay long, unfortunately. I've got an appointment at the district attorney's office. What an interesting life you must lead. Say when. Oh, I'll leave that to you. (laughs) Excellent, excellent. I distrust a man who says when. If he's got to be careful not to drink too much, it's because he's not to be trusted when he does. You're a closed-mouthed man? No, I like to talk. Better and better. I distrust a closed-mouthed man. He generally picks the wrong time to talk and says the wrong things when he does. Well, sir, let's talk. Swell. Shall we talk about the black bird? (laughs) You're the man for me, sir. No beating about the bush. Right to the point. But first, sir, answer me a question. Are you here as Mr. Shaughnessy's representative or Mr. Cairo? Well, there's nothing certain about that either way. But which will you represent? It'll be one or the other. Not necessarily. Who else is there? There's me. Ha <laughs> ha! That's wonderful, sir, wonderful. I do like a man who tells you right off that he's looking out for himself, don't we all? Uh-huh. So let's talk about the blackbird. Let's, Mr. Spade. Have you any conception of how much money can be got for that blackbird? No. Well, sir, if I told you, if I told you half, you'd call me a liar. No, not even if I thought so. Hmm. <laughs> you, uh, know what the bird is, of course. No, I don't. They didn't tell you? I know what it's supposed to look like, and I know the value in human life you people put on it. But Mr. Shaughnessy didn't tell you what it is, and Cairo didn't either? No, Cairo wouldn't talk. The girl said she didn't know, but I took it for granted she was lying. Not an inauspicious thing to do, sir. Well, if you don't know and they don't know, then I'm the only one in this whole wide, wonderful world who does. That's great. When you've told me, that'll make two of us. Mathematically correct, sir. But I don't know for certain that I am going to tell you. Now, don't be foolish. You know what it is, and I know where it is. That's why I'm here. Well, sir, where is it? There, you see. I must tell you things, but you refuse to reciprocate. That's hardly equitable, sir. No, no, I don't think we can do business along those lines. Oh, you don't, huh? Well, think again, and think fast. I told that gunman of yours you better talk to me before you're finished. You'll do your talking today, or you're through. Why am I wasting my time for? I can get along without you. Now talk. Talk! Anything wrong, boss? Come in, Wilmer. Yeah, come in, Sonny. And keep your hat off your gun, or I'll knock your ears down. Listen, you have a... Wilmer, Wilmer. Just stand over there. (laughs) My apologies, Mr. Spade. Make up your mind, Gutman. While you're doing it, keep that gunsel away from me, or I'll kill him. You hear me? I must say, you have a most violent temper. You've got till 5.30 today. Then you're either in or out. For keeps! Spade walked from the hotel to City Hall in the office of the district attorney. After a brief interview there, during which Spade refused to help the authorities on the theory that solving the murder and handing the murderers over to the police was the only thing that could help his clients and, coincidentally, stay out of jail. Spade was returning to his office when a now familiar face poked out from a dark alley. Hey, you. Well, hiya, Sonny. 
Didn't expect to see you until 5.25. I hope I haven't kept you waiting. Well, you keep on riding, you bud, and they'll be picking out iron in your liver. Cheaper the crook, the gaudier the patter, huh? Gutman ready to talk? He's waiting at the hotel. Come on. Mr. Spade, it's a... What's this? Get in there, Sonny. Here, Gutman. Here's your boy's six-shooters. What happened, Wilmer? Oh, I was just making a point to your boy here, Gutman. I jumped him out in the hall, took his toys away. Those guns aren't going to do him a lot of good if he loses them so easily. Oh, I'll get you, Spade. Someday I'll let you have it right in the face. Wilmer! Wait in the next room. Go on. By God, sir, you're a chap worth knowing. Thanks. Drink? Sure. Oh, by the way, I owe you an apology. Your temper earlier was most impressive. Oh, never mind that. Let's talk about the bird. Water under the bridge, huh? Better and better. All right, sir, let's talk about the bird, Mr. Spade. This is going to be about the most astounding thing you've ever heard. Yeah? What do you know about the Knights of Rhodes? Crusaders or something, weren't they? Indeed they were. In 1539, these crusading knights persuaded the Emperor Charles V of Spain to give them the island of Malta. He made but one condition. They were to pay him each year the tribute of a falcon in acknowledgement that Malta was still under Spain. Do you follow? So far. Do you have any conception of the astonishing wealth of the order at the time? I would imagine they were pretty well fixed. Pretty well fixed is an understatement, sir. They were rolling in wealth. It's common knowledge that the crusades to them were largely a matter of loot. The knights were profoundly grateful to the emperor and for his generosity, so for the first year they sent him not an insignificant live bird, but a glorious solid gold falcon, encrusted from head to foot with the finest jewels in their coffers. Well, sir, what do you think of that? I don't know. These are facts. Historical facts. Not schoolbook history, but history just the same. They sent this glorious bird on their finest galley. But the ship never reached Spain. A famous admiral of buccaneers took the knight's galley and the bird. Mm -hmm. In 1713, it turned up in Sicily. In 1840, it appeared in Paris. And by then, it acquired a coat of black enamel, so that it looked nothing more than a fairly interesting black statuette. Then in 1922, a Greek dealer named Drakos found it in an obscure shop. No thickness of enamel could conceal value from his eyes. Drink up, sir. Yeah, well, uh, go on. I got wind of Drakos fine, but when I arrived in Athens, I discovered that the bird was gone and Drakos murdered. That was over 20 years ago. Well, sir, it took me 20 years to locate that bird, but I did. I traced it to the home of a Russian general, one General Kemedov in Istanbul. I sent some agents to get it. They got it. But I haven't got it. So the bird doesn't really belong to you or Cairo. It belongs to a General Kemedov. Well, you might as well argue that it belongs to the King of Spain. I don't see how you can honestly grant clear title to anyone else except by right of possession. Your glass, sir. Thank you. And now, uh, before we start to talk prices, how soon are you willing to produce the Falcon? A couple of days. Ah, that is satisfactory. Well, sir, here's to a fair bargain. Drink up. Well, what's your idea of a fair bargain? $25,000 when you deliver the Falcon to me, and another 25000 later on. Or I can give you one quarter of what I realize on the Falcon. That would amount to a vastly greater sum. Well, uh, how much greater? Who knows? Shall I say 100000 That would be the minimum. Hmm. And, uh, and what... What, uh, what would you consider the maximum? I refuse to guess. But if you were to press me, what would you say to a share equaling a quarter of a million dollars? Oh. Well, I, so you, you, you think the dingus is worth a million, hmm? At least. That's a lot of dough. A lot of dough. Um, huh. What's the matter, Mr. Spade? Are you feeling ill? I, uh, well... What was in that drink? The drink? No, I drugged it. Yeah? You'll be unconscious very shortly, Mr. Spade. You best lie down. Wouldn't want you to fall and hurt yourself. That's, uh, that's, uh, I have, I, I have to go, uh, I... Oh, dear, dear. Joel, Wilmer, 
to come in. Is he unconscious? Yes. You know, he's a very interesting person, Joel. The kind of person I enjoy dealing with. It's a shame it had to end this way. Come now, we have an appointment with Mr. Shaughnessy. You're listening to the Maltese Falcon on the Icebox Radio Theater. We'll be back after this short commercial break. Looking for a creative outlet? Like to learn more about a fun family activity in a relaxed, low-stress setting? Then the Icebox Radio Theater has a new program for you. Join the Dry Ice Club, a brand new program from the IBRT, meeting weekly at the iFalls Public Library. The Dry Ice Club is a casual get-together where you have a chance to try acting or sound effects, ask questions about the IBRT, and learn more about audio drama, voice acting, and podcasting. It's open to ages 12 and up, and it's free. Please bring a cell phone, tablet, or laptop so you can access the scripts. Tuesdays, 6.30 p.m. at the iFalls Public Library. Join us for the Dry Ice Club starting May 2nd. The fun world of audio drama and theater is waiting for you. You'll remember from our story that Sam Spade unwisely accepted a drink from the master criminal and con man, Casper Gutman and found himself face down in Gutman's hotel room. When Spade awoke, he was alone. Darkness was falling outside, telling him he'd been out for several hours. Pale and still shaking from the effects of the drug, Spade staggered back to his office where Effie Perrine waited for him. Sam, what happened to you? Uh, I took candy from a stranger, darling. Who did this? Fat man. But why? I didn't have a chance to ask. Evidently, he wanted to get me out of the way or something. But I don't get it. Yeah, yeah, just a minute. Spade Investigations? Yes? What? I can't hear you. Who is it? Could you repeat that, please? Yes, I've got that. Captain who? Jacoby? Yes, I... He- Hello? Hello? She's gone. Who? Uh, it was the O'Shaughnessy girl. She wants you. Here's the address. 26 Ancho Street. She's in some kind of trouble, Sam. She was telling me something about a man, a, a ship captain named Jacoby, and then and then something happened to her. What? What happened? I don't know. Like, like she was being chased by someone. I, excuse me, we're closed. <gasps> you spade. Y- yes? <sighs> Pack- <clears throat> package for you. She told... Told me. What's the matter with you? Uh, uh. Sam! Lock that door. Yes, all right. Is he... Is he dead? Yeah. Got about four slugs in him. His coat's soaked through with blood. <sighs> hey, 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 now. Pull yourself together. I'm... I'm all right. Good. Uh, what's it all about, Sam? What's that bundle he was carrying? I... I think... A package, Angel. Here, put it up here. Hand me the scissors from your desk. If this is what I think it is. Yeah. Yeah. What is it? We've got it, Angel. We've got it. The Maltese Falcon. The Falcon? Look at it. A black bird, a million bucks under a coat of enamel. On the phone. That's what she said. That's what she was trying to tell us. That Captain Jacoby was bringing us the Falcon. So he must be... Oh, Sam, he was trying to help her and they killed him. Give me a, give me a second to think. You've got to go to her, Sam. She's in trouble. All right, I'll go. As soon as I'm gone, phone the police. Tell them how it happened, but forget he brought the bundle. Get it straight now. Everything just the way it happened, but without the bundle. And I took the phone call, not you. Said I had to go out, but I didn't say where I was going. Do you got all that? Yes, Sam, but hurry. Go to her. You're a good man, sister. The next hour flew by as Spade tried to be in several places at once. First, he dropped the bundle at the Grand Central Station package counter, mailing the claim check to himself. Then he took a cab to the address O'Shaughnessy had given on Ancho Street, only to discover a vacant lot. It was a bum steer. As Spade rode back to the city, he pondered exactly who made that phone call and whom he could now trust. He learned the answer the moment he opened his apartment door. 
Greetings, Mr. Spade. The answer was he could trust no one at all. Come in, come in, and keep your hands where I can see them, or Wilma will most definitely shoot you. Quite the party. Good evening, Cairo. Hello, Precious. Hello, Sam. We took the liberty of letting ourselves in while we waited for you, and now that you're here, let's sit down and get comfortable. Sure. Sam, I I tried to call you. I I wanted to tell you... No, it's all right, honey. Just take it easy. But they've kept me prisoner. And you've come to no harm, Miss O'Shaughnessy. No harm as yet. You carrying a rod? Let me see. Ah, get away from me. You're not going to frisk me. Stand still. Put your paw on me. I'm going to make you use that gun. Ask your boss if he wants me shot up before we talk. Sit down, Wilma. (laughs) Mr. Spade, you're certainly a most headstrong individual. Well, then, let's talk. Yeah. Are you ready to make the first payment? Take the falcon off my hands? Do you have it? Sam, have you? Yeah. Then I'm willing to pay. Hold the money, please. Wait. There's another thing to be taken care of first. We've got to have a fall guy. I beg your pardon? The police. They have to have a victim. Somebody they can stick with those three murders. Two. Only two murders, Mr. Spade. Thursby undoubtedly killed your partner. All right, then two. Point is, I've got to come up with a victim, or I'll be it. And whom do you recommend as this victim? Well, how about giving them Wilmer here? He'll do. Why, you <laughs> Oh, my God, Mr. Spade. You truly are a character. It's our best bet. Look at him. He's made to order for the part. D.A. will get a conviction standing on his head. Well, what do you think of this, Wilmer? Mighty funny, huh? Mighty funny. He did kill Thursby, didn't he? Get up on your feet! Take it easy. Stand up! Stand up and shoot it out! (laughs) Ha! Young Wild West. Calm yourself, Wilmer. Mr. Spade, your plan's not at all practical. I think of Wilmer just exactly as if he were my own flesh and blood. Let's not say anything more of it. Well, all right. It's not as good as my first idea, but I've got another suggestion. Do you want to hear it? Most assuredly. Give them Cairo. Suppose we give them Mr. Spade or Mr. O'Shaughnessy. How about that? Now, look, you people want the Falcon. I've got it, and a Fall Guy's part of the price I'm asking. As for Miss O'Shaughnessy, well, if you think she can be rigged for the part, I'm perfectly willing to discuss it with you. Sam! What's the matter? You, you don't mean it. You couldn't. No, no, I don't. Because I don't think the cops will be happy with you as their victim. Personally, I see only one guy who's a really right fit, and that's Wilmer. I've taken all the writing from you I'm going to take. Well, ma. Get on your feet. Don't be concerned about the guns these pocket edition desperados wave around. I practiced taking them away from him before. I'll kill him. I'll kill him! Get up. There. I told you. Here's his guns. Put him on the couch there. Get him a shot of whiskey. He'll have a hell of a headache when he wakes up. I shall look after him. I'll bet. Well, there's our fall guy, Gutman. What do you say? Well, I don't like it, sir. Not one bit. Well, either you say yes right now, or I'll turn the Falcon and the whole lot of you in. Hmm. All right. You can have Wilma. Now that's settled, how soon can you get the Falcon? A couple of hours. That's satisfactory. In the meantime, I think it best for all involved if we stay within each other's sight. All right. But while we're waiting... We have to get a few details worked out. First, why did Wilmer kill Thursby, and what about Captain Jacoby? I shall be candid with you, sir. Thursby was Miss O'Shaughnessy's ally. We believe that disposing of him would frighten Miss O'Shaughnessy into patching up her differences with us. Well, now that sounds all right. Now, what about Jacoby? Captain Jacoby's death was entirely Miss O'Shaughnessy's fault. Oh, that's a lie! What happened? Cairo saw in the newspaper that Jacoby's ship would be arriving here in San Francisco. You remember that he and Miss O'Shaughnessy had been seen together in Hong Kong. Well, sir, he put two and two together and guessed the truth. She'd given the bird to Jacoby to bring here. You should know I learned of all of this just minutes before you arrived at my hotel. And that's when you decide to slip me the mickey, huh? There was no place for you in our plans, Mr. Spade. Joel and Wilmer and I went to the boat to call on Captain Jacoby and found Miss O'Shaughnessy with him. We persuaded Miss O'Shaughnessy to come to terms, or so we'd thought... Well, sir, we mere men should have known better. En route to my hotel, Captain Jacoby and the Falcon slipped through our fingers. It was neatly done, sir, indeed it was. It would have gotten away completely if Wilmer hadn't got him in his sights and put several bullets in him. All right, that settles that. Can you start getting the Falcon now? Not until sunrise. Settle in, folks. We'll make some coffee and enjoy each other's company until then.
It's several hours later now, and the jittery, sleep-deprived company watch each other with wary eyes until... Is that... Yeah. My secretary left with the Falcon 20 minutes ago. You don't mind if I go to the door with you? All right, come on. Hello, Sam. Here it is. Sorry to spoil your day of rest. Not the first one you've spoiled. Is there anything else? No, thanks. Okay. Let me have it, Spade. Now easy, easy. Give it to me. Here you are. Now, finally, after 20 years. Yes. There it is. There you are, my beauty. Is it... Is it the Falcon? The we'll original? Make, we'll make sure, Cairo. Your penknife, Joel. Here. Thank you. Just remove a tiny bit of the enamel. No. No, it can't be. No. Gordon, Ow. what's the matter? It's a fake. It's lead. It's a fake. But it can't be. All right, Bridget, you've had your little joke. Now tell us about it. No, Sam, no. That's the one I got from Kemidov, I swear. You, you boogled it, Gutman. You and your stupid attempt to buy it. Kemidov found out how valuable it was. He put a fake in its place, you stupid fathead. You imbecile. You, you. <laughs> yes, it's the Russian's hand, all right. There's no doubt of it. <laughs> <laughs> Delightful. Well, Joel, what do you suggest? Shall we stand here and shed tears, call each other names, or shall we go to Istanbul? Istanbul? Are you going? For Twenty years I've waited for that little item, and I've been trying to get it. I'll go on trying. I'll come too. Get Wilma. We'll start immediately. Yes. Oh, he's gone. What? The bedroom window's open. He's gone. <laughs> a swell lot of thieves. We have little enough to boast about, sir, but the world doesn't come to an end just because we've run into a little setback. Sorry about your money, Mr. Spade, but of course you didn't earn it. Nonsense. I held up my end. You got your falcon. It's your hard luck that it wasn't what you wanted. My hat, Joel. Now, wait a minute. Wait, wait. Mr. Spade, it will do no good to argue. I haven't the money with me anyhow. And besides, if I remove your hat, you'll see it conceals a derringer. Had an idea that's the way it was. I have no intention to use it. Its only purpose is to illustrate the point that any effort to stop us leaving San Francisco is uh, ill-advised. Don't you agree? I don't have a lot of choice. No, sir, you don't. Well, we'll say goodbye to you now, and since the shortest farewells are the best, adieu. And to you, Mr. O'Shaughnessy, I leave the lead falcon on a table as a little memento. Sam? Sam, what are you going to do? Hold on. Hello, Tom. Spade. Hey, how you fixed for red points? Well, I got some for you. You ready? Okay. Floyd Thursby was killed by a kid named Wilmer Cook. He's about 18, 19. He jumped down my fire escape less than 30 minutes ago, so he should be nearby. Here's the wrinkle. You want to find the kid? You have to look for Casper Gutman, his former employer. You can't miss Gutman. He must, he must weigh 300 pounds. That fellow Cairo is with him, too. Be careful when you go up against the kid. Yes, very. All right, I'll see you soon. All right, we've only got a couple of minutes to get set for the cops. Now give it all to me, fast. Well, what do you mean? The day you first came into my office, why did you want Thursby shadowed? Why, I told you, Sam. I suspected him of betraying me, and That's I... a lie. You had Thursby hooked, and you knew it. You wanted to get him out of the way before Jacoby came with the bird. Isn't that so? Yes. What was your scheme? I thought if he saw someone following him, he might be frightened into going away. That's ridiculous. Thursby wouldn't have scared that easily. You must have told him he was being followed. Yes, I told him. But please believe me, Sam. I, I wouldn't have told him if I thought Thursby would kill him. Well, if you thought he wouldn't kill Miles Archer, you were right, Angel. What? Miles had many brains, but he was too good a detective to get caught like that up a blind alley with his gun tucked away on his hip and his overcoat buttoned. But he would have gone up there with you, Angel. He was just dumb enough for that. He would have looked you up and down and licked his lips and gone, grinning ear to ear. Then you could have stood as close to him as you liked in the dark and put a hole through him with a gun you'd gotten from Thursby that evening. Oh, don't talk to me like that, Sam. 
You know I didn't. This isn't the spot for that schoolgirl act. Both of us are sitting under the gallows. Now tell me, why did you shoot Miles? I didn't mean to at first. I, I didn't, really. But, but when I saw that Floyd couldn't be frightened, I... Oh, Sam, darling. You thought Thursby would tackle Miles and one of them would go down. If it was Thursby that died, you were rid of him. If it was Miles, you'd see Thursby was sent up for it, right? Oh, something like that. But when Thursby wouldn't tackle him, you took one of his guns and did it yourself. Then you heard that Thursby had been shot and you knew Gutman was in town. And that meant you needed another protector. So you came back to me. Yes. But, Sam, it wasn't only that. I would have come back to you sooner or later. From the very first minute I saw you, I, I knew I would always come back to you. Well, if you get a good break, you'll be out at the Hatchapi in 20 years. You can come back to me then. I'll wait for you. What? What do you mean? I imagine the police have Gutman and Cairo by now. Maybe even the kid as well. They'll be here in a few minutes, and then we need no! to... No! Sam, no! Did you kill Miles? I, I didn't mean to, Then but... it's settled. Yes, Angel, I'm sending you over. The chances are you'll get off with life. That means if you're a good girl, you'll be out in 20 years and I'll be waiting for you. If they hang you, I'll always remember you. Don't, Sam. Don't say that. Even in fun. <laughs> I, was, I was frightened for a minute. I, I really thought you do such wild and unpredictable things. Don't be silly. You're taking the fall. You've been playing me. Just pretending you cared to trap me like this. You didn't care at all. You don't love me. I won't play the sap for you. You know in your heart that in spite of anything I've done, I, I love you. I don't care who loves who, and I won't play the sap. I won't walk in Thursby's and I don't know how many others' footsteps. How can you do this to me? Surely Mr. Archer wasn't as much to you as... Listen. This won't do any good, but I'll try it once and then give it up. When a man's partner is killed, he's supposed to do something about it. it. Makes no difference what you thought of him. He was your partner, and you're supposed to do something about it. As it happens, we're in the detective business, and when one of your organization gets killed, it's bad business to let the killer get away with it. Bad all around. Bad for every detective everywhere. You don't expect me to think that these are sufficient uh, wait reasons- Wait till I'm through. Then you can talk. I've no earthly reason to think I can trust you now. If I protect you from the police, you'll have something on me that you can use whenever you want. And since I've got something on you, I couldn't be too sure you wouldn't put a hole in me someday. All of those are on one side. Maybe some of them are unimportant. I won't argue about that, but look at the number of them. What have we got on the other side? All we've got is maybe I love you and maybe you love me. You know whether you love me or not? Maybe I do. I'll have some rotten nights after I've sent you over, but that'll pass. And if all I've sent doesn't mean anything to you, then forget it. We'll make it just this. I won't because all of me wants to, regardless of consequences. And because you've counted on that from the very beginning. You counted on that the same as you counted on it with, with all the others. But Sam... No! You killed Miles and you're going over for it. Come in. Hello, Spade. Tom, Lieutenant, come in. Uh, we got him. Cairo and the fat kid, too. Swell. Here's another one for you. She killed Miles. Just like that, huh? Just like that, Lieutenant. Must be a big disappointment for you. I bet you thought you had me when you heard Gutman's story. Ah, uh, knock it off, Sam. Your day will come, Spade. Yeah. My day will come. Well, shall we be getting down to the hall? Come on, sister. It's... it's Lieutenant, isn't it? Yeah. Could you help me with my coat, please? I, I find I'm growing quite chilled. Yeah. You all right, Sam? Yeah. Oh, one more thing. You'll need it for evidence. Here's the statuette all the fuss was about. Oh, well, this it doesn't look like much. No. No, it doesn't. Uh, heavy. What is it? The uh, stuff that dreams are made of.
That was, of course, sound effects artist Evie Konat, uh, Joel Cairo. <laughs> Effie Perrine was played by Scott A. Turner. <laughs> Wilmer Cook in various parts, of course, including Miles Archer, The Stiff, by Caleb Silvers. <laughs> Introducing his first time at the microphone for the Icebox Radio Theater, Mr. Dalton Johnson, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Casper Gutman, of course, by Justin Kapla. <laughs> the deadly and beautiful Bridget O'Shaughnessy, played by our own Ayla McIntosh. <laughs> Hiding in the corner, Mr. Jim Yant, who was the friendly policeman. <laughs> and I'm Jeff Adams, and I played Sam Spade. That is the end of our show. <laughs> What's the date? What date are we doing the May show? 19th? Okay, just so you know, we have an agreement here with Rayanne. Can we have a, a hand for Rayanne? Yeah. Yeah. We'll be appearing here every month. Uh, the next week is, the next time is May 19th. 19th.